Hello everyone, welcome, glad you could make it. And in this tutorial, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit more detail on wood. Uh, Steve Hood uh, messaged me and wanted me to go through uh, a little bit more of my idea and uh, a little bit more in depth on, on wood, on my, my painting of wood and also uh, my painting of rocks. Why I do what I do and, and so on and so forth. So, and this is generated from Thoreau House. Uh, some questions on that. Uh, one of the things, I was kind of going into a little bit of the idea and the philosophy of why I do what I do. One of the things I try not to do, and you actually in one of my tutorials you see that I use known, known oil, but I don't like to. I don't like to use known oil on my wood unless I, unless I really want to darken it up. But if I do, then I want to bring it up. But I don't want to use it as a blanket. Now there's always a place, a time and place for using a black. Uh, but I don't like to use black washes unless it's like on armor or something. Then I'll use a black wash. But if I want to, if I want wood to go dark, I'm, I want to use like a dark purple, greens, uh, and, or something like that, and or like a uh, agrax, or I'll mix my own wash. Uh, but I really want to try to avoid black. Uh, you know, try to recreate black. And I have to give some credit to uh, Peter Overton. He uh, years ago. He did a piece, I think, I know it was a competition piece, and uh, I noticed, maybe it wasn't, but anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, he kind of woke me up to what my mother used to teach me about uh, various colors in artwork. And uh, I noticed one of his pieces, and I thought, how did he achieve that color? And I couldn't quite pinpoint it, it was purples. He put some purples in there. Like, oh yeah, my mom, used, my mom had, she did a uh, forest one time and there was purple all over on her pine trees and different things like that. So that's when I really started to change and really start to experiment with how I did things. And that's how I do wood is I think of it that way. And uh, I use various techniques. When it comes to terrain, I'll tend to dry, dry brush a little bit more or versus on miniatures, I don't dry brush as much. Uh, I think there's a place and time for dry brushing. I think that's a really good technique depending on what you're using it for. But anyway, uh, Steve Hood is why I am I'm doing this, these tutorials. Well, uh, yeah, he is actually why. Uh, he asked, asked more questions. I thought, oh, yeah, I better go back and explain some of these things because I swept over them in the whip. But let's jump right in it, uh, and I'll do four different techniques. Well, yeah, roughly four different techniques. I think there's a time and place for everything that you do. So let's jump in and bust this one out. All right, so I've uh, already applied some balsa wood to this that I had from another project. Uh, I've already ran the wire brush over it like I did when I made in the in the woodworking uh, tutorial and other things that I've done. This, however, is something different. This is just, it's kind of like a scratch board. Is it a scratch board? No, chipboard. I don't know. Uh, it's like a card. It's just the cardboard for, you can use cereal boxes. You can use, uh, obviously, uh, the boxes that your uh, miniatures come in. Uh, I tend to use cereal boxes mostly uh, when I when I do this style. And this is I I did a bunch of buildings that were Western for a local game shop, and this is what I did. I just cut some pieces out, glued them to some foam core, and uh, made them like they were slats uh, on the side of a Western building, and went to town. So what I'm going to do on this one? Uh, oh, by the way. This color right here is dark brown, and this one right here is uh, burnt sienna. No, sorry, raw sienna. I can't even think of my numbers, my names. And this one right here is khaki. Now, two of these are uh, from previous, uh, from the row house. Uh, I just wanted to replicate them here in a little bit more detail. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a shade to this, uh, half of it. I'm gonna use Ag Agrax Earthshade to just shade half of this. And what I wanna do is when I shade it, so these are over, overlaying this way. So I started here and I overlaid, 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 overlaid. So what I wanna do is that when I wash it, I want the wash to settle here. And if you tilt it up a little bit, it just makes it so the wash runs that direction or shade as I was corrected at one spot in time. And that's gonna kind of be the running joke. I believe there's a time and a place for any style, and ultimately the style that you choose is fine because it's your stuff, it's your terrain. 
I wouldn't compare it to other people. Uh, the only time comparisons matter is when you enter a contest and you're being judged. So um, that's other than that, it's what you want out of that piece. And that's all that really matters. And as long as you're happy with it, or even if it's just learning, if you grow, whatever the case may be, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't compare it to other people. I'm also going to apply Agrax to the khaki color right here. Now, what I want to do is I want it to, because wood obviously isn't uh, the same most of the time all the way across, but unless I really want to get into it and hand paint it and put that type of work and that type of detail into it, I need to fake it. I need to figure out a way to do it that's easier or, well, if I want to paint, hand paint, that's fine too. But when I'm usually doing large terrain pieces, I don't want to take that kind of time just because I don't. And so what I'll do is I'll just kind of bead the, in this case, the earth shade to give it that variation that wood tends to have sometimes, especially when you start to stain it. And I pick colors to kind of bring out the stain a little bit more or the the um, the recesses in my project a little bit more. And I really don't have a rhyme or reason as why I pick colors that I do. And sometimes I won't lie, I pick bad recipes. I pick recipes that suck. And I just try to recover them like I did in uh, when I did the Bambi. That Bambi in real life just was horrible. Uh, and this one I kind of want of a more red tone. And so what I'll do is I'll use the Reichland Earthshade on this one. Now one of the things you want to do when you when you bead and drop stuff, you want to you want to make you want your washes to or your shade to still be wet when you when you do it. You don't want it to completely dry it. Well, when I say you don't want to, I'm just teaching the way I do it. You may become you may develop a better way. And in fact, I hope you do than I do. Um, I want I, I would love that if if you developed a better way to do this. This is happens to be the way I like to do it. And I'm going to do the same on this one. I'm just going to come back and make sure I beat it up to where it has a variation of color. Now, a lot of times if I'm going to do a large piece, I'll mix my own washes. I'll just put water and uh, whatever if I'm going to do a large area. But uh, for the tutorials, I can't. I kind of want to use an existing color out there so it's easier to replicate. Um, but obviously, you don't need to use my exact same colors. Now, the one thing I want to do is you don't want to work in a pattern. Like I just noticed I did a pattern right there. Uh, I'll, now I want to try to break that pattern up. I don't want to work in a pattern. I want it to be broken up. So I'm just going to make this whole piece right here one color. Uh, I try to work in odd numbers too. So if I'm going to do something, I want to make, I want to do things in odd numbers. So if I was going to do a design or something natural, I don't want. I don't want four. I don't want six. I want five or I want three. I don't know why. Well, it's a lot of it has to do with art and composition, but uh, just I like it better. All right, I'm going to come back with some Drucci Violet on this piece right here. And we're going to, uh, for un all intents and purposes for the video, we're going to uh, behave like this is the bottom of the house or whatever we're dealing with. And in doing so, uh, the reason why I shade the bottom is because if you go along where a lot of houses, especially if they have like stucco or anything like that, come in contact with the earth, there's a lot of uh, possible organisms, algae, depending on what climate you're in, dirt being splashed up from rain. So I always want the brown dark. I want it to show a little bit more. Uh, and we can, with wood, I'm just gonna go with some purple on this one and also on this. You, you can also add browns and dry brush, uh, browns and greens. But for illustration, we're just worried about the wood right now. We're not worried about weathering. We're not worried about, uh, sorry, not weathering. We're not about, worried about other uh, growth and things like that. And then I'm just gonna kinda add a little bit of color And also vary it so it's just not an even line. And maybe on some of the seams, even go up some of the seams a little bit more. Uh, as if something is growing up a seam, because you'll see like vegetation, different things grow up cracks. So just go out and look in your yard or other houses you're driving around uh, carefully. Keep an eye on your road, eye, your eyes on the road. And just do that. And when this dries up, you can always go back with a little bit more and just here and there. And it's kind of, when you're doing it, don't have the same solid color all the way down. Always vary it. So it gets darker at the bottom, obviously. But just kind of vary the colors. And you can even come back up here and do the same up here if you want this a little bit darker purple up here. Uh, I would just experiment to where you get it to where you, you like it. Now, if I was to have like a, a peg or something embedded in the wall, I might go back, like on the row house, I went back with some known oil. So I really wanted to shade, I really wanted it dark be, below one of the pegs that were in the, 
that was in the wood. So I went back with no oil to exaggerate from a distance that, that shadow that would be under the peg. So in game place, what you're doing sometimes is you're you're forcing light, you're forcing uh, situations that you normally see outdoors onto your onto your uh, projects that you're doing. And so that's why I do what I do. And then I may just come up here and really this can be, it's just that you want variation, you want color and purple and greens and different things like that are better than blacks in my personal opinion. And, and uh, you get that, you get those other tones and those other things that tend to work really well. And then if this was the roof line, I'd do the same up here, but I wouldn't do it as exaggerated as much down here unless I was trying to do weather streaks down. And once again, you're just I'm just trying to force shadow and uh, force contrast, force variation, and do things like that. So let that one dry. So as I said before, there's purpose in every variety and also what you want to do uh, and what your final outcome is. If you're trying to sp speed things up, if you're painting for a store, uh, if you just want to produce a lot of mass terrain, there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, so what I'm, so on this piece, I want part of it to not have the, uh, the shade on here so we can kind of see a variation of color. And this is storm gray. Uh, it's just a dark gray. I'm gonna use a off the shelf dry brush. Well, I turned it into a dry brush. Uh, I'm gonna start out with not very much on my brush. Now, one thing you want to be careful is if you if you streak, because obviously you're going to streak here and there. And I'm going against the grain, so the, the slats are going this way. I want to go against it. I don't want to go with it. So I want my paint to hit the edges, and it, it'll transfer paint better. And what I'm trying to do on this is give it a western fill, like the wood has been outside. It's been exposed to the elements. And the reason why I come back with, or I just go in straight to gray, is... A lot of it's primarily, I'm just trying to speed it up. Uh, this is something, or I just want a lot of it, or this, that's what I want. Uh, I have buildings like this, and I, on some things I don't want to spend a lot of time on, and I have my reasons for it. Uh, maybe I just want a lot of per terrain, and then I have my pieces that I want to spend more time on. But I found is, as I progress along my terrain path, my terrain creating path, I don't want to make things more than once. And so if I have a really nice piece, I want to spend a little bit more time on that piece or a piece at all. I want to spend a little bit more time on it so it looks good for me and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it and I'll be pleased with it for a few years uh, and maybe as long as I have that piece. I also believe in doing multiple colors. I don't believe in just doing straight to, I don't believe in doing jumping straight to a color really bright. Some people do and like I said, it's up to you what you want to do. I'm going to come back with a Bridgeport Gray. And this one, I'm going to try to remove more paint off of my brush than I did with the other one. So I don't want it to really be overpowering. And the reason why I use more than one color is, like I said, variation and depth. And that's how nature works. Nature works in layers. It doesn't work in instant jump to colors. See how you can just bring that out? But if I, if I have dark gray here, and I just want to bring the edge out, then it gives that fake transition, like I put a little bit more effort into it, but I really didn't. And you can see the difference in just taking a little bit of time and, and doing some in shade. If you're gonna do a lot of buildings, I wouldn't recommend using the GW stuff because it'll cost you an arm or leg. I would just mix a, a bulk paint with some water and maybe some acrylic medium uh, so it distributes well enough and call it good. You can actually start with a darker color, like a really dark wood or a really burnt umbar or something like that, and you get the same effect as if you had this down here, or relatively same effect. But this happens to be lighter, so in the long run, what I would want to do is I'd want to really build this up to where it looks really gray and washed out, but you can see the differences you can get, which is to, which is with a few minor a few minor touches. So what I want to do is I want to bring this up a little bit more, just to kind of illustrate, so I'm going to use a soft gray, and it, once again, I'm, on this, I'm going to even remove more paint from my brush and uh, err on the side of caution, to where I may not have hardly any paint at all. And when with, when you're coming with, when you're dealing with highlights, when you think you have that much, if you, th if you think you have enough paint removed and you're kind of new at this, remove a little bit more, uh, just in case, because it's easier it's easier to go back and layer back up than it is to your first stroke to have too much on there. And I'll just barely pick a spot that's not that bit not that critical and just gently apply pressure and to see how much paint I have on it. And then as I figure I have the paint that I want, I supply more pressure. So even at a distance, 
If you didn't want to spend money on balsa wood or basswood and you want to produce some terrain, you can still do this because the cardstock or not the cardstock, but the cereal boxes and that, they have a texture to them themselves and it lends at a distance of a few feet that feel of wood. Okay, so I had technical difficulties. My battery died and I thought I'd replace it. So what I was about to say is I just used a big brush, bulk paint, and I would, if I was gonna do it for a hobby store or bulk train, or even personally, if that was what I wanted, I would just dry brush and go to town on it. I need to pay attention to my battery better. Uh, that's why I have five of them, but I just didn't think about it. So this still has to dry, so we're gonna have to come back to that. So now we're gonna come back and do some dry brushing. And for this piece right here, We'll do khaki, mudstone, then sandstone. And for this piece right here, we'll do, go back to raw sienna, and then we'll do dark goldenrod. Now the idea, I one of the things I like to do is I like to come back with the original color and dry brush it a little back in. So it uh, kind of revives the color a little bit. That's what I was kind of going for. I don't always do that. I'd like to say I do one, I do the same thing all the time, but I don't, uh, I change things up. And a lot of times, to be honest with you, that's because I don't write down the recipe. The advantage of doing these videos is I can go back and look at my recipes now. So we'll start with khaki. I don't want to be heavy handed with this. I also don't want to always go the same direction. So if it was on the side of a building like this, I'd go back and forth. I don't want to go the same direction the entire time. I want to catch the grains on both sides. I also don't want to be heavy handed near the top or the bottom. Oops, see that big old streak right there? Uh, I want to now kind of feather that out. I was a little bit too heavy handed there. The other thing you can do too is so when you have a sh sh uh, shadow here, you can leave that, be very light handed on the shadow itself or that darker spot and be a little bit more heavy handed where it was lighter to even exaggerate those tones even more. I still want to ha hit down here a little bit because if I can come back and weather later, I'm going to hit that with brown or greens or both and dry brush, maybe even do some shades, washes, whatever just to get that organic dirty feel towards the bottom. My philosophy, one of my philosophy, philosophies, <laughs> I can't even say the word, is that even if your consciousness doesn't pick it up sometimes, your subconscious will. So even though we we are, I game in a make-believe world, I still want some, some, not all, but some elements of reality, especially when I'm trying to imitate reality. One of the things I'll do is, I won't even clean my brush because I'm jumping to another one. I'll just dry it off as really, really as best I can, and then move. And now we're moving to mudstone because I still have existing paint on there, but it's the paint I've already used. But now with mudstone, since I'm going lighter, I want to even be. Uh, I don't want to apply hardly any pressure. I don't want any paint. And like I said, I'd rather uh, do it more times than do it one time and have too much paint on there and then screw it up. And this is to kind of weather it or trying to kind of change the wood. I don't know. I mean, I, I probably won't go. You don't always have to go up to gray, especially if it's like an interior building, because it's really not going to see that the sun, so to speak. And you don't always have to hit it, hit it all over either. Now, if you're going to weather it, you obviously want to have that gray everywhere uh, because it's going to be uni uniform. But when you're actually creating those variations in the wood, just be ver be random. And sometimes that's the best because it just gives that that even more variation to what you're doing. Now we're coming with the sandstone and I'm gonna be even lighter. I really don't want hardly any paint on here again. And I repeated myself several times, but I, sometimes I believe we, we uh, learn by repetition. I'm gonna even be lighter. Now I really wanna hit the edges on this cause I want to exaggerate. And sometimes I'll go down the center with a, even a smaller dry brush just to exaggerate those lines. You can come back in here with a smaller dry brush and just exaggerate those lines a little bit more. Now let's say this was towards the top and it was really exposed or it's on the edge of a deck. Then I would come back and I want that edge of that deck to really stand out. And it's edge highlight and I want it to really stand out. So I will come back and do something like that to where it's, I'm really making that edge of the highlight. This is next to the building, so I want it darker. But out here is gonna be on the outer side. Now if I have, now if it's a wall, and I say I didn't do that, if it's a wall and I have a peg here, I want it only dry brush the top. I want to make that artificial sun. I want to exaggerate where it's coming down. So in your brain, or it looks like it would outside or more, more, more or less. Okay. Now we're going to jump to the raw seed on this. I'm actually going to use this formula right here in a project that's coming up, but you'll just have to wait to see. So I really liked how it turned out on the row house. I'm going to do the same thing uh, that I did over here where I start to see something become a little bit lighter. I might just address it a little bit more and bring it up a little bit so there's variation in the wood again. 
like like I said, on large projects, this type of attention to detail might not be the best ever. And even when all of a sudden there's more paint there because I didn't see that rise, that's okay. And it's not it's nothing to worry about. Just leave it because it's just one more step of variation. And now see how this grain right here looks pretty cool. I want maybe I want that to show up a little bit more, so I'll address it more. And therefore, there's that much uh, more attention given to that. Like, man, English was not my forte. Once again, not very much paint. Don't be heavy handed. Start out light. Don't don't apply a lot of pressure with your brush and maybe just hit areas that you don't care if it gets a little bit more paint on there. This is the dark goldenrod color. Now, if this was an interior building, this would be my last color unless I really want to bring it out. But I like the way this looks. So this would probably be my last color right here. And with this color, I really want to exaggerate the edge. And like I said, if this was the edge of a deck, I would come back and even though it's dark, I would still come and do that just to bring that out. And as I'm doing it, I want this side lighter. And then as I as paint is removed from my brush, I'll feather in. So it gives that feather look. Well, that's a little more in depth on the wood tutorial, uh, give you more of ideas of how I do things. It's really hard for me sometimes to explain my process, but that's kind of get the idea. At least I hope the idea is there and I hope it was conveyed. Uh, but um, the, today's taco goes to Steve Hood because he's the first person to uh, request a video from me for a, a tutorial to give a better explanation. So I appreciate that. I uh, appreciate the interest. Hope we can learn together and, and uh, get something out of it. But if you know him, if you know Steve Hood, uh, buy him a taco and uh, probably the best taco he's ever had. Uh, so yeah, do that for him and I appreciate it. Uh, but if you have any questions on this, uh, comment below, please uh, carry, uh, continue on the conversation uh, or any video for that matter. And if you like what you see and you enjoy this the product that we're delivering to you, uh, share our videos, uh, spread the word, let people know so others can utilize the information as well. Uh, and just imagine, execute, persevere, and remember what my mother used to always say, that anyone can do art. Cool fire. So Southern Knights.